Today, many businesses use a VPN, a virtual private network. If you need a VPN on your RV 160 or 260 router and are hoping to keep things simple, let's go. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll show you how to configure the RV160 or RV260 router to use OpenVPN with a password only for client authentication. Configuring an RV160 or RV260 router to use OpenVPN with a password only for authentication is a simpler and faster method as opposed to using a certificate and password authentication. What makes it less complicated? There's no need to create a client certificate while utilizing password-only authentication to set up the router. Clients will authenticate using passwords. However, a Certificate Authority CA certificate and a router certificate are required for both methods. Before configuring the router, a CA and a router certificate need to be generated. To generate the first certificate, click on Administration, Certificate, Generate CSR, CA certificate as type, and then a name. Choose FQDN for the subject alternative name. This name can be ambiguous, but the name must have a dot in it. Just finishing out the rest of the fields. It's important to note that the common name must be the same as the subject alternative name. Following this, choose a valid duration period and click Generate to generate the certificate. Since a second certificate is needed, the next step is to again select Generate CSR slash certificate, and then certificate signed by a CA certificate as type from the drop-down list. You need to enter a name for the certificate. Select FQDN as the subject's alternative name and give it a name. Following that, the rest of the boxes need to get filled in. Don't forget, the common name must match the subject alternative name for the certificate authority. So. Choose the certificate that you already created earlier and enter a valid duration period. Moving along, it's time to configure OpenVPN. On the router, select System Configuration, Create a Group, give it a name, click the On button for OpenVPN under Services. After making changes to the configurations, it's important to click Apply to save these new settings. Next, Click Add under Local Users. Enter a username and then a password to create a new account. This will be the client's password for the OpenVPN. Choose the group from the drop-down list that you created earlier. If more clients need to be added to the VPN, a username and password will need to be generated for them as well. It's best practice to store the username and password. Type them in and then click Apply. Navigating to User Groups, the group that was created is displayed. When moving over to the User Groups, the newly created group has OpenVPN enabled. Next, configure the OpenVPN settings by clicking VPN, OpenVPN, clicking Enable, and then selecting WAN as the interface. Remember the CA Certificate Authority that was created earlier? It's time to use that. Confirm that the server certificate is the second certificate that was previously created. Next, choose Password Only for the client authentication. After that, choose Split Tunnel, which allows you to specify which networks you want to connect to via VPN. Split tunnels can be beneficial as they provide VPN access to certain networks on the router while denying access to the others. Split tunnels will also send the client's traffic through the VPN if it is destined for the defined networks. All other traffic will be sent out to the client's default gateway. Now, input the network address under IP address, followed by the network mask to grant access to your router's network. If there were more networks that were cleared for client access, you could enter another IP address. In addition, a secondary DNS could be added. So for a backup, insert the known Google DNS server and click Apply. Next, export the OVPN file by selecting Export Client Configuration Template. Click on Generate, Confirm, and then click the red blinking icon to save. Under Configuration Management, save the running configuration to the startup configuration. Click that handy Apply button once again. Sometimes the RV router will be double natted behind a modem or a router. If you are double natted, there are a couple more steps to follow. This can be checked by navigating to System Summary, then WAN, and checking for an IP address. 
If the IP address is private, the router is double netted. Plan time for just a few added steps. In your configuration, if the IP address is public, you can skip ahead. If it is double netted, find and open your OVPN file, modify the IP address under remote, and provide your public IP address. Because it is double netted, you need to make sure that port forwarding is configured for port 1194 to the Cisco RV router. Once this is confirmed, save the changes to the file. Okay, next configure the OpenVPN client to import the OVPN file that was exported from the RV router. The router's public IP address should appear under the server host name. Following this, enter the username and password that was set up on the RV router. Once connect is clicked, a pop-up message occurs. Click continue to connect the OVPN client. That should do it. OpenVPN is configured and connected to your RV160 or RV260 router with password-only authentication. Thanks for watching. See you next time.